15 minute or less lecture series anatomy and physiology chapter 5 tissues so tissues are similar cells that work together to perform some functions so you have many cells all together uh, there are four main types of tissues epithelial tissue that line surfaces nervous tissue found in our brain and spinal cord muscle tissue found in skeletal muscles and many yeah, organs and connective found throughout the body, connective tissue being very, very diverse. We'll start with the epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue lines every body surface and all body cavities. It lines the inside of hollow organs, such as the stomach, intestines, blood vessels. It's always next to an open space, a lumen, that may have stuff in it, gases, oxygen, air, fluids such as blood, uh, things we've eaten. Uh, epithelial tissue also makes up glands. The tissue is avascular, has no blood vessels, and has very little or no extracellular material, except for the basement membrane that helps to attach the cells to underlying tissues. So here is the epithelial cells. They have an apical surface that's next to the lumen or open space. They lie on the basement membrane, which is non-living protein fibers that help attach them to the underlying connective tissue, which does have blood vessels. Functions of epithelial tissue include protection, uh, often multi-layered. It can experience friction and lose some of the surface facial layers without having any actual damage occur. Uh, there's absorption. It can absorb materials, bring them into the body. And secretion. It can secrete materials uh, that need to be produced for mucus, sweat, tears, etc. And also movement of extracellular materials. The apical surface could have cilia. So it can beat moving materials outside of the cell. Epithelial tissue is classified by layers of cells and by cell shape. If you do it by layers, it is a single layer. It's called simple, simple epithelium. It's a single layer, but it looks like it could be more than one. Then it's pseudostratified. And if it's clearly two or more layers, then it's stratified. You can also do it by cell shape. If the cells near the surface are flat, it is squamous. If they are the same as they are wide-eyed, they are cuboidal, and if they are much taller than they are wide, they are columnar. Simple squamous epithelium, one thin layer of flat cells. Very important for diffusion, for filtration. They can form the alveoli, the air sacs, walls of capillaries, and line structures like blood vessels and lymph vessels. Simple cuboidal epithelium, single row of cubes, uh, oidal shaped cells with an open space. They can form uh, kidney tubules, glands, Covering of ovaries in the kidneys, they can be involved in secretion and absorption. A uh, simple columnar epithelium, single row of column-shaped cells, can be ciliated, have cilia that will then beat and move fluids outside of the cell. This can be found in uterine tubes of the brain. Or it can be non-ciliated, not have any cilia. In the uterus, intestines, stomach. Sometimes in the intestines, you'll see microvilli, little uh, protrusions of the cell membrane into the lumen or open space to increase surface area. Uh, non ciliated can be involved in protection of underlying tissues, secretion, and absorption. Pseudostratified columnar epithelium can be ciliated or non ciliated, and it is found in places like lining the respiratory tubules, uh, where the cilia can move mucus that is trapped substances we breathe in. Moving on to the stratified, stratified squamous epithelium. If you look near the surface, near where the lumen is, you see these cells are super flat. They are very protective in function. They can line the outer layer of our skin, the epidermis. Uh, then they are keratinized. They have lots of dense uh, proteins holding the cells together, making the cells very tough and protective. You can also find them inside the body, in the throat, in the mouth, in the vagina or anal cavity, all about protection. Stratified cuboidal epithelium, two or more layers of cuboidal cells. They can be in glands, pancreas, ovary follo bearing follicles, nephrous tubules, often involved in protection. And then we have the stratified columnar epithelium, two layers of cells, the second layer being column in shape, found in the male urethra, important for protection. And then surprise, we have transition epithelium. It is many, many layers of cells. And these cells can be rounded or flat. And this depends on whether the structure they're helping to form is in a relaxed state or a stretched or distended state. Uh, this tissue is only found in the urinary system. So basically, when you need to go to the bathroom, the urinary bladder has 
extended and stretched out, and the cells of the transition epithelium are flat. But after you relieve that pressure, they will return to the relaxed state. Uh, glands can be one cell or actual organs and other structures. They secrete things, mucus, hormones, enzymes, so forth. Endocrine glands do not possess a duct. They do not secrete to a surface. Instead, they secrete their uh, material into the interstitial fluids around the gland or into the bloodstream. Excrement glands, on the other hand, do have a duct. This duct leads to a surface, so the secretory portion produces things that get released to the surface. Moving on to connective tissue. Connective tissue has lots of functions. Again, very diverse. It can bind structures together, provide support, provide protection, act as a framework. It can store fats and energy. It can fill spaces, produce blood cells, protect against infection, repair tissues. Very, very, very diverse. We got bone, we've got disconnected tissue, area of tissue, very diverse. Um, often, but not always, they have a lot of extracellular material, extracellular matrix. And that matrix will be protein fibers, long fibers made up of protein, and ground substance, the material surrounding the fibers and surrounding the cells. Also, many connective tissue possess blood vessels, making them vascular. Two common cell types in connective tissue, you can have fibroblasts. Fibroblasts are important. They are very common. They secrete protein fibers and ground substance. And then we can also have macrophages, macrophages that live there or macrophages that arrive. Their job is to help uh, destroy pathogens and, and recycle cell debris. There are three main types of protein fibers in connective tissue. You have collagen fibers made of collagen. They are important for adding strength. Uh, they resist forces. They can hold body parts together. Uh, then there's elastic fibers. Elastic fibers are stretchy and flexible. They also uh, um, branch out a bit. So they are important for things that need to stretch and return to the original shape. And then there are reticular fibers made of a type of collagen, but they are thinner. They have lots of branching out. And they form mesh-like structures, often good for um, filtering fluids. Most connective tissues possess at least one of these protein fibers, but not always. Loose connective tissues include areolar connective tissue. Areolar connective tissue has uh, lots of cells, fibroblasts, macrophages, and so on, but they're scattered about. There's lots of protein fibers, collagen fibers, elastic fibers, but they're also spread out. And there's lots of a gel-like matrix that fills in all that empty space. That is the ground substance. And they uh, often bind body parts together, are found under the skin and around organs. Adipose tissue. Adipose tissue has one primary function to store energy in the form of fats. These are the fat cells called adipocytes. So here's an adipocyte. See the ring of the cell membrane. Inside is looks clear, but actually that is filled with the triglycerides, with the fat. And here's the nucleus, very little extracellular matrix found under the skin, around joints, patting the kidneys, protecting other internal organs. Then we have reticular connective tissue. This uh, reticular proteins form a meshwork, and embedded in it will be cells, fibroblasts, leukocytes, red blood cells, and they will be involved in um, filling the inside of structures that need to have a filtering type function, such as the spleen and lymph nodes. Dense connective tissue are densely packed with collagen fibers. It's almost all collagen fibers. However, you can see little dark spots where the um, fibroblasts are found. There's very little blood vessels in dense connective tissue, so it heals slowly, but it's great at resisting forces. So it makes up the tendons, the ligaments, and the white layer of the eyeball. Hello. Cartilages. Cartilages are usually sort of pad-like in structure. They are rigid tissues that provide a support framework. They do not have blood vessels, so they're avascular. They heal slowly. Their cells are called chondrocytes. The chondrocytes, shown in blue here, live inside of special spaces called lacuna for one, lacuni for many, and their matrix is sort of gel-like. Often there is a perichondrium, a dense connective tissue structure nearby that is carrying the blood vessels that will provide the nutrients for the cartilage. Hyaline cartilage has collagen fibers, but you can't really see them. They're scattered out as its chondrocytes within the lacuna, found at the ends of bones, in support of respiratory structures and passageways and also important for the embryonic development of bones. Elastic cartilage has lots of elastic fibers, all interconnected. It has the lacuna with the chondrocytes, and it helps make up the framework of some external parts of the ear and parts of the larynx. 
And we have fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage has lots of collagen fibers. You can even see the collagen fibers all bundled up. And it is important for shock absorption, say, as intervertebral discs between the vertebra or in the knees and the pelvic girdle. Very important. Bone is another type of connective tissue. Bone is a solid connective tissue. It has little spaces called lacunae, and within them live the osteocytes. Bone has collagen fibers. It also stores lots of calcium and phosphate, making it nice and firm and hard. It supports the body, provides uh, character sites for muscles, and is where blood cells are made. And then blood. Blood is the liquid connective tissue. It has the liquid matrix, no protein fibers, but there are proteins dissolved in the plasma. It has many cells, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and one big function is transporting substances throughout the body. Muscle tissue, muscle tissue, or muscle fibers or cells, they can shorten to produce movement, to generate a force. And generally, these cells do not divide. There are three main types. There is the skeletal muscle tissue. It makes up our skeletal muscles. It is voluntarily controlled uh, by nerve impulses. It are long, long columnar cells with striations, this dark and light pattern found in the cells. It has multiple nucleuses, and it's um, pretty powerful. Cardiac muscle tissue. Cardiac muscle tissue is only found in the heart, and its cells are shorter uh, than skeletal muscle cells and sometimes branch. They tend to have only one nucleus, but they do possess the striations, the light and dark pattern. Also, where two cardiac cells come together, they have dense protein connections between them called the intercalated discs that help to hold them together. And then there's the smooth muscle tissue. Smooth muscle tissue is made up of single thin small cells that taper at their ends. They tend to have only one nucleus and they are often involuntarily controlled. They are found in the walls of many of our hollow organs, such as the intestines, the stomach, blood vessels. And as you can see here, they lack striations. There is no dark and light pattern in the, these cells. Nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is found in the brain, spinal cord, the nerves. The most famous cell of the nervous tissue is the neurons with their long axons, their short uh, dendrites and they carry uh, nerve impulses to control various processes in the body. And then there are also other cells, support cells, called neuroglial cells that are very important. So here's a big neuron with its processes, and these little dots here are the nucleuses of various neuroglial cells. All right, that is tissues.